uh, another very you know personalized question which is quite a private question that happens to be asked and I need to say it and I'll tell you why I need to say it. It says, Salaamu Alaikum, I have not been intimate with my husband for over two years because he is tired all the time even when I make a demand. I want to know Islamically what is the status of the marriage. Firstly, obviously it's a marriage that has a problem in it. It doesn't automatically nullify. If you want to apply for a nullification of the marriage, you have grounds by which you shall be granted that nullification because being intimate with your spouse is one of your rights. It's one of the rights that you have. So if someone is not intimate with you, you have the right to apply for a nullification, but it does not automatically nullify. Some people say, if for four months you didn't, uh, you know, uh, if you were not intimate for four months, then suddenly that marriage is dissolved. That is not true. That is not true. It doesn't automatically dissolve. But if you apply, they will study the matter, the, either the, the, the Qadi, or in the case where there is no Qadi, then the panel of scholars, etc. They will study the matter and they will issue you with a nullification but at times it's there is no need to break a marriage if we can resolve the matter my beloved brothers and sisters the prophet ﷺ told us that to be intimate with your spouse is an act of worship known as a sadaqa it's a charity it's an act of worship to be intimate with your spouse to satisfy him or her is actually an act of worship we are muslims we are proud to mention that you need to make sure that your spouse is satisfied and you need to do it as an act where you know you are earning closeness to allah La ilaha illallah. why is it initially when you are married very newly married it might be novelty you might be excited you you know it's it's good and it, you are just fulfilling a desire without thinking it's an act of worship wait until a few days years pass etc a child comes two three four the person still has needs especially the women sometimes they have changed a little bit because they've given birth to your own children that little change sometimes makes men who do not fear allah who are not true muslims it makes them back off because they think, ah, you know, now you are not that pretty. Now you are developing wrinkles. And now, you know what, I think I'll go for someone else who is younger, etc, etc. You know what, you, no matter what you do, you need to realize you are also becoming older. If you are putting up with someone you think is becoming older, they are putting up with you who is also becoming older. You need to realize that. Number two, if they had these children, they had them for you. Number three, you need to know just like you have desires, she also has desires. And if you are not going to fulfill your desires with her, where is it going to be fulfilled? Therefore, both ways, it is true. If you don't fulfill her desires, where do you expect her to fulfill? If she is a God-fearing woman like this one who is asking, she will tell you, two years, I haven't been intimate. I will, I will actually call that brother and lash him in public. Subhanallah. How could you do that? May Allah protect us. I see some of the men are just looking at me like you will lash at me, you know. <laughs> Inshallah, I hope they are not in our crowd. It is an act of worship. What is the point of the whole world's women thinking you are a big deal and your own woman you haven't even satisfied her? La ilaha illallah. It, the Prophet says, Fi ahadikum sadaqa. When you fulfill your base desire in the correct way. It is an act of charity. I said that moments ago. The Sahaba anhu were quite surprised, just like you might be surprised when I said it is an ibadah. It is a what? Ibadah. So, amazingly, they asked, O oh Messenger, peace be upon him, one of us literally has sex with his wife and we are getting a reward for it. So the Prophet said, do you know or do you see if you were to put your organ into haram would it not be would you not be earning a sin they said yes we would be earning a sin he said in the same way if you put it in halal you will be earning a reward so number one you do it which is halal number two is you're fulfilling the desires of someone in a halal way saving them from haram saving them from so much do you know what it also keeps your mind at ease, your sanity. Another thing, it keeps you young. It keeps you, so one might argue how, 
you know what, get married and fulfill your rights of each other properly and see how you will be so happy with each other, subhanallah. It keeps you in a good shape as well, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. So it's a topic many don't like to discuss, but the reason why we have to say it is because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spoke about it in public. It was relayed to us in a public fashion in a hadith. I am proud to be able to mention these ahadith of the Prophet. ﷺ. In fact, in another lecture, I spoke about an old man who was the Imam in one of the masjids in South Africa. When he was, after many years, one day he was a minute or two late for Salatul Fajr. You know how the people are in some of these big masjids where the person who is probably the waqif or someone of the committee, if they are there, they would always have something to say to the Imam. That Imam was a minute or two late after so many years. He knew that this is going to be a Qiyamah for me. He knew it's going to be trouble for me because these people are going to say, why were you late? Right? How could you have been late? They don't look at the fact that I came early for 20 years and now I'm late one day. You know what he told them? Brothers, before you jump to conclusions, let me tell you, don't blame me for being late. I was busy in one ibadah and I've come to another. Did you get that? La ilaha illallah. From one ibadah to another. You know, initially they didn't understand. He clarified it a little bit more, which I'm not going to say. But after that, all the young boys used to look at him and say, hey, this imam is serious. He's old. <laughs> He's old, but he's not cold. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. May Allah grant us ease. Islam is beautiful. We talk about these things because women are suffering in silence. What's the point of a man saying, I have four wives? And the first one is crying because why ever since you got the second or third, you've just forgotten. It's over. It's like, how are you going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are you doing? And I'm talking about a, a difficulty we are facing in Nigeria. So many people are asking questions. And sometimes you know the man, la ilaha illallah, you're looking at him, big belly man, and you are thinking, but your wife is going to shake my hand so strong, but you can't shake your wife. If you shook her a little bit, then she will have a malima the next day. La ilaha illallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Allah protect us. So this is a topic that needs discussion. Wallahi, let's not fear. We need to come out. The sisters are suffering in silence. The, wallahi, the ibadah, the real ibadah is sometimes when you don't really want to do something, but you know that you have to and you know that it has to come from you and you get it done in a beautiful way. Trust me, you can even earn Jannatul Firdaus in that way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. I, I think I spoke very long on that matter, right? Was it an important matter? The men are saying yes louder than the women. Allahu Akbar, may Allah forgive us. Okay.